Finally, I'd like to end the guitar section with just a little, a little demo of making something funky. I'm gonna build a little track. I'm gonna show you how to do this. I keep a Lin 2 and 4 handy. Doesn't sound good, but that's the point. We've got our Cory Wonk Strat. We're gonna use some magic. Now the magic here is on the way in, I've been doing more of this. I bring up this EMT delay uh, on a on the dual delay preset, and then just on this dry wet turn it down, and then compressing it through an LA two. All right, let's hear what we got going. Let's cook. Let's cook. So we got a track down, and this is a little Nile Rodgers technique. All of this is Nile Rodgers. We're in the neck position with Lobella flats on a Cory Wong Strat. And when he, he does an overdub of a guitar, we're going to let out less harmonic information on the guitar, you know? We're just not going to press down as much over here. So... It's a double, but it's more staccato. Let's hear that. So now we got one in the left, one in the right. Let's see what processing we're doing on us. We're doing nothing. No, we're sending them to this aux bus. Where we got a good Hertz tone control on the everything closer preset, a Wolf compressor on the punch and crunch and a focusing EQ bringing up a lot of high end. I think it's too much high end. So I just took out that high end and now we're gonna get our Stingray bass and play like a Verdine White style bass line. That, that, that's what we're doing right now. Like that is an Al McKay kind of guitar part from Earth, Wind & Fire. Played on the Nile Rogers sound. Now we're gonna get our Bernard Edwards bass and play a Verdine White style so you can make these fusions happen in your own your own home. All right, so we're gonna bring up our third track here. We got our Stingray with Tomastic flat wounds, and I'm actually gonna keep on this signal chain for better or worse. You know, I'm just having fun these days. You know, I'm recording on the way. I never have done this in my life in the past, but I just want to have some fun here. Four, two, five, one. And the key to a Verdine White style bass line is like tons of space. So let's try that. We got a nice groove going. Let's hear that. So now the drums are getting squashed, so I want to find my Lin here. 
and add some transient shaper to it, which will be the soft tube transient shaper and add some punch. <laughs> Don't steal that. Don't steal that. I might use that. So that's a fun experiment we, we just did. EWF playing through the chic tones with a lindrum, which would, I guess, be most associated with Prince. The classic lin move, as I'm sure you're aware, I, I don't want to bore you, is to go to that snare knob and t tune the pitch down. That's what Prince was always doing. Let's hear that. <laughs> One trick is we duplicate that track, bring in another Lin, pitch stuff around differently. And just pan it around. So, but I, I don't even like that. I like the the single in. That's kind of been my latest MO is like trying to groove with as little drum information as possible. I don't like it. And when in doubt, I just keep, uh, I just keep some claps ready to go in uh, in my loop folder here. Bring in the claps. These aren't working for whatever reason. Here we go. There we go. Ship it to Antoine. We got ourselves, we got ourselves a fun little track. All right, that'll do it for guitars and vocals. Now we've got a full house ready to move in. It's on the market. It's looking for a buyer, and I think that this one's gonna sell. All right, moving on to the final lecture, where I'm gonna tell you all of my biggest influences and try to get into the what made them tick.